Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist. And today I wanted to take a look at um, the new nodes that I've been working on the last few weeks, which all have to do with making terrain. Um, they're not done yet, I don't have icons and I'm still kind of trying to figure out exactly how they should be used and how I wanted them to all work together. But I wanted to do a bit of a preview anyway, just to sort of see what people thought of them and if, um, it, made, if it was making sense how they worked and what they were supposed to be able to do and maybe if there's any other features that would be nice to add, um, other nodes, things like that. Anyway, so these are the nodes. The basic idea is you use a train base to create a base mesh, and then you can stack a bunch of these different train modifiers on top of it to um, be able to shape the train, sort of sculpt it in an easy to edit way, and then also add details and scatter things across it uh, in different ways. So let's take a look at how you might be able to do some of that. So first of all, we'll put the train material on this plane, and then we'll add a terrain base to it, which makes it bigger. Let's go ahead and make it smaller, maybe 22 meters. Um, then you have some options here. Um, initially, you can just change the scale of the noise or how strong that noise is. But then you can also add a curve. And let's just make this an automatic curve. And we'll make some sort of shape here. And then what, if you have a curve, you can use the curve to define the bottom of valleys on your terrain. So we can come in here and we could add a second valley like this. And then you get ridges in between them. So you can sort of draw like where, it also works pretty well because that would be where rivers might flow. So you can sort of create some curves as guides and then adjust this somehow to get your terrain. The cool thing about this too is that you can tile everything. So you can break your terrain up into smaller pieces that are faster to calculate and then share the modifiers between them all. Anyway, let's turn, once you have a curve to define where the valleys are, you can adjust some other things. So you can make the valleys wider or narrower and you can adjust how steep the hills are on either side. Then you can also um, add noise to the hills, which sort of works like fake erosion. Um, and you can control how strong that is. You can also change the shape of the hill if it's more sort of concave or convex. Anyway, let's turn the steepness way down here. And then um, let's turn the noise down as well. And then let's go ahead and make a copy of our curve here and we'll make a curve that will define where a river would go. And let's adjust it to be slightly different, but similar to our, our valley curve here. And then on our train object, we can add a river modifier. Let's get rid of the second one for now. By default, the river modifier just adds a random river across your terrain. But you can also give it a guide curve. And if you give it a guide curve, then the river will follow the curve. Um, let's put our water material in here and then put the train back on. And we'll select our water material from the river's material slot. And then we can add water into, uh, add water to the river. Then let's increase the depth a little bit to fix that part over here where it's too high. And then we can make the river a bit more random, a bit wider. Just how rough the bank is, things like that. Then we could go in here and we could add a second curve. So just make a copy of this and rotate it. And we'll have this curve be a road going across the river. So to do that, we can just add the road modifier. We can select the road. We can adjust, let's put the road before the river. And then we can adjust how much the road cuts into the terrain. And we can also adjust again the width, how much the width varies and how soft the edges are and stuff. All right, so now that we have that, 
we can do some other things. We could add some details to this. So I have a couple of different ways to do that. One of the simplest is just to add an erode modifier to it. Um, if you do an erode, it calculates paths for flow, and then it will use those to cut into the train. Um, this is kind of a slow modifier, so you probably want to turn it off if you're trying to edit, um, or at least once you have a larger terrain, you'll want to do that. But you have some different options. You can control how strong that effect is. Let's just go ahead and add the last modifier you should always have on a terrain is the terrain attributes modifier, and it just sets some additional things like steepness. So then if we just tweak some values here, the quality controls the resolution of the underlying mesh that um, all the flow fields are calculated on. And then the density controls how many curves are calculated. And then, and then you can control for those curves how many steps are in the curves and how far it looks ahead after each iteration and things like that. The erode modifier uses several repeat zones, which is why it's a bit slower, but it can give some pretty nice results, I think. The problem with the erode modifier is that if we make a copy of this terrain and put it over here, the problem with using erosion on two adjacent tiles is that the erosion on the tiles doesn't match up. And I can't figure out a way for it to match up because when you do distribute points on faces, which is how I find the starting points for all of the flows in the flow field, um, I can't figure out a way to make that consistent in like world space. So instead, as a workaround, what I came up with was essentially splitting the, that erode node into two parts where you can first calculate all of the, the flow map for the whole collection of terrain objects. And then once you, and then, and then you need to apply that because otherwise you get a dependency cycle. And then all of your terrain tiles can reference the single flow map um, to actually carve the little eroded valleys into the terrain and add the details. Anyway, to continue with this, um, maybe for some reason we want to put a, a house or something on this ridge line. And so to make that easier, we want to flatten it out. We well, can do that by adding a plane as a control. And then on our tile here, we want to add a set height node. And we want to put that set height node probably up above everything here. And then we can choose the guide surface to be our plane that we added here, which you can see it starts to match uh, where the plane is. If you adjust the strength to one, it will go all the way to the plane. Um, if you have it at some lower value, it will the effect will be a bit softer. And then by adjusting the grow value, we can sort of control how quickly it falls off. And then there's some additional options for like noise and stuff. So then if we go in this plane here, we could scale it up so that we have enough room for our building. And maybe we want to pull down the ridge line a bit here. And then and then we can increase the strength of that a bit, maybe something like that, and then pull this back up a bit. I think something like that looks pretty good. Then we can select all of our terrain tiles in the collection, and we can copy the modifiers to make sure they all have the same values. Now there is a bit of a problem here. You can kind of see that there's some clipping issues. And you can see where the erode has darkened this area here, but it's a little greener over here, and that's pretty obvious. To fix that a little bit, I have another modifier called the terrain crop. And if you put that on your stack of terrain modifiers, then you can choose a size to crop the terrain to, which in this case we want to be 20 meters, because that's how far I moved this one over. So let's copy that to the other tile. And now you can see that there's still a seam, but it's a lot less visible than it was before. Then what we might want to do is scatter some some like grass across this terrain. So one way you can do that is to add, I actually like to add like a curve and make it a two-dimensional curve with the, with the fill set to both. And then you can just make this, you can set the curve type to be a poly curve. So it's easy to edit. I don't know if it doesn't really make a difference, but then you can just draw like a boundary shape and that can be where your grass will be scattered. You can also make it be a global effect. Um, so let's move this to a new collection. We'll call this details. 
And then I have over here, all right, so I've dragged this grass asset into the scene now, and I'm just gonna move it, I'll just move it underneath here. And then on our scattering zone curve here, we wanna add the terrain scatter modifier. And I guess I had that um, hard-coded to where the file I was testing in, the collection from there, so let's just delete that collection. Then once we have the terrain scattering here, we want to choose, we need to choose the terrain collection, which is called terrain in this case. And then um, I have this grass, which we can scatter. And you can see it matches the area we defined with our curve. Then we can preview the masks, which will show us this visualization here. So we can see the area that we're working on, and then we can see the white is where the grass is going to be the largest and most dense, and then if it's black, it won't be. So we could go ahead and make this a global effect, which will apply to the whole thing. And then we have a bunch of different attributes that the terrain system generates that we can use to control the selection for our scatter. So I've just turned them all off. All of the mass controls, I made vectors, because I liked that it sort of tidied up the names of everything. But um, just so you know what they are, if you hover over it, it tells you in the tooltip, it's the min, the max, and then the factor. So we have a minimum value, a maximum value, and then how much that gradient affects the mask that's used to scatter the object. So if we turn this up to one, the steepness is now being used by the mask. And then if we adjust the min and the max values, we can control what is selected and how soft it is around the edges. So then we also have mask for the roads in the water. We don't want uh, there to be grass in the water and we don't want there to be grass on the roads. So we should turn those up. Um, on the road here, we need to adjust this. I like this, make it a little bit softer. And then there's also a noise layer to the mask that you can adjust to sort of add some random pockets that are thinner or slightly smaller. So then once we have this selection, um, we can turn preview off, which will scatter our grass around. And then we can just play with the density. We could put more grass in, scale it up a bit, um, something like that. All right, so then what we could do is we could make a copy of this grass layer. And instead of the grass, let's pick the rocks. So that gets us these little stones here. And then for these rocks, let's edit the mask to put the, the rocks where the erosion has happened. So let's um, preview the mask again. Um, we don't really care about steepness, so let's turn that off. And then we can turn the water down because we don't really care if it's in the water. We can leave some noise in there, but then we wanna turn the erosion up and we wanna flip this around so that we get a positive value where the erosion has happened. And we can select how much of that, something like this. So there's our mask. We can see what that looks like. All right, so I feel like that's looking okay. Um, one other thing we could do here is let's just edit this road curve. Let's actually select our collections here and turn off the erosion because that's slowing things down. And let's go into the, the road here and we can make the road wider here at the, at the crossing. And then I want to adjust this again so that the road cuts a little bit closer. Let's make it like 0.66. And we'll copy those modifiers. And then we just need to edit this road curve so that it better matches the train here. So we'll try to set the height to be... And then I think we need to adjust the path to be a little bit wider. And then, and then let's just pull this up so that it sort of slopes down to the river and crosses. And I'll pull this up a bit. Maybe something like that. All right, I feel like that looks a little more natural. Now let's, um, we'll select these again. Let's turn the erosion back on. And then let's make a copy of our stones. And then in the same place we have the stones, let's add some plants. So let's change the seed here to something different. And we'll select these 
um, plants. Let's put these plants in here. Let's um, change the density a, a bit because we don't want so many. And then we want to go ahead and add the water mask back in because we don't want these plants in the water because it looks kind of weird. But then that gives us these sort of weeds in the dirt um, where the erosion happened and there's the rocks. So you can see how you could use that to scatter all kinds of different things around. Um, so then what we could do is we could edit this mesh here and maybe make sort of a cliff shape here. That could be kind of interesting. And let's then, and then let's select our terrain. We'll make a copy of it and move it 20 on the x-axis to extend our land here. And let's make the visibility on this mesh be, or the viewport display be wireframe. So then we can use this um, simple mesh here to adjust the shape of this little raised area. Then we could extend, then we could extend this again. So we could, let's just hide our details here. We could make a copy of this on the y-axis, like so. Um, let's edit this river curve so it doesn't go down so low. And when it gets slow like this, um, it's almost always the erosion. So again, we could turn off the erosion and then this should be pretty quick to edit. I think that looks pretty good. We could add a bit more noise. Like so. And then let's turn our erosion back on. Add another copy here. We can extend our river a bit. Let's turn our details back on. So that's what I've got for the train node so far that I've been working on. Um, I'd be curious to know what you think, if um, you think it looks fast and easy to use or complicated and hard to understand or if it needs other features um, and what those might be. The I like that you can build it in tiles and sort of keep things separate. The downside of that obviously is that the erosion, which is really what makes it look the best, doesn't tile well. But like I said, I do have a way around that, which involves creating the flow map for the entire terrain at once and applying that so it's like cached. Um, which also makes the erosion algorithm faster, but the downside is it doesn't update dynamically as you change the train. But it solves the tiling issue. Um, anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to do a quick sort of preview demo of what uh, I've been working on and find out what people thought about it. So, so yeah, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.